At time is 6.30. I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Our first order of business today is Select Board Reorganization. I just want to start by saying it's been a pleasure to be the chair for the last year. It's um, been a lot of fun. learned a lot. Um, would ha be happy to continue doing so, but also I'm happy to have somebody else do it if they'd like to. Okay, so I run this part of the meeting, and um, the first thing is to ask if there are any nominations for chair. Are you interested in being chair? I'll nominate Nathaniel. <laughs> no. You, me, are you interested, <laughs> Crystal? So, I guess just for discussion purposes here, um, historically, how long has it been going on that they've always rotated through? At least, I want to say nine years while David was on. I think he was the last on. And they were doing that through, I think, yeah. They've, yeah. It's been a different chair every year. Yeah. So do we want to keep with that? I mean, it's up to you guys. Do we want to keep with that rotation? Do we want to... I mean, is there any reason not to keep with rotating through? It gives everybody a chance. Um, I mean, I did choose one year, you know, not to do it only because it came up like my second year being on the board. And that year when I start, you know, did it, I didn't even get the full year because town meeting was late that year. And, you know, things were just kind of um, messed up. So, I mean, I don't know. Is there any benefit to not rotating that anyone? I, d I, don't, I don't know the answers to all this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's pros and cons. You know, there's the different perspectives, the opportunity to set the agendas. That's really what the chair's <laughs> um, main function is. Um, it, you know, there's a, something to be said for consistency and... Um, you know, knowing who the person is, but there's, like I said, you know, having having different perspectives and different um, opportunities to lead just gives people um, options, I guess. Do we know how other surrounding towns and stuff do it? Do they rotate through also? I don't know. I don't think so. How many years were you here with it? I mean, you so you've been here how long? I think it's my fifth. And you see, yeah. it, see it change every year. Four and a half. Yeah. yeah. And any problems? Nope. Each chair likes to do things differently and we'll just adapt to however it works. Um. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I enjoy doing it. I'm happy to keep doing it, but I also don't want to be, you know, greedy about it. And I understand that it's been rotating and that it's something that, that you guys, you know, have every right to want to do also. Um, my feeling on it is that we can do whatever we want to do. And again, if one of you wants to be a great, I'm happy to step aside and have one of you do it. Um, if you guys don't really want to have to run all the meetings and do all that stuff, also perfectly fine. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I, I'm, I don't, I have no problem going to back to rotating, but also I don't see any reason why we have to rotate it if nobody else wants to do the chairship. So that's why I'm really kind of leaving it up to you guys because I'm happy either way. <laughs> well, I guess, would you like to do it? <laughs> Again, there. You said you had a short year, right? I'm sorry. You said you had a short year. Well, my first year, yeah, yeah was you know, and that's why I wasn't interested in it in the beginning. Um, but I mean, there, there's again on the on the flip side of the, there's there's no higher voting power or anything else for the chair versus anyone else. So I'm I'm fine if you want to do it again. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, I, I heard a nomination for Nathaniel as chair. Um, and a second? I'll second. Okay. Any other nominations for chair? Hearing no other, I'm going to close the nominations. Um, all those in favor of Nathaniel as chair? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, vice Chair. 
nomination. Would you like to be vice chair of the chair, Dan? <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do whatever. No, yes. <laughs> well, see, that's exactly how I feel about because there's there's no difference. Right. Um, are you planning on being remote? Often? Uh, uh, no, no. My plan is to be here. Yeah. The only time the last he told me to be remote because it was so short last time. Oh no, no, <laughs> no! I understand that totally. I'm just thinking, you know, if yeah. if you know, because we have that ability to do it yeah, remote. Yeah, but that's fine. You, I'll nominate you for vice chair, and I don't mind being clerk. All right. I'll nominate Crystal for second vice chair. Okay. Uh, any other nominations for vice chair? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor of Crystal Drake Tremblay for vice chair? Aye. Aye. Zero. All right. I nominate Dan for clerk. I second. Any other um, nominations? All right, hearing none, I'm going to close the nominations. All those in favor of Daniel Murphy for a clerk? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Our second order of business today will be to approve the minutes of our last two meetings. We had a regular scheduled meeting on April 29th and a emergency meeting on May 3rd. The motion we approve the minutes for both. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of the last two meetings. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right, on to new business. Our first new business is appointment of Ben Peters as associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes, so I believe that um, when Barry Toslowski passed... Um, forget his name there was an associate member who was elevated to uh full member um Todd? who Todd? Yeah. no um on south main anyway um and so there was an associate membership that opened up um ben peters expressed interest uh the chair wrote an email um approving it and so it would be for uh, an associate appointment um and does the ZBA vote on that at all, or is that entirely on us? No, that's a, okay. Sorry. With the recommendation of the chair. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Um, any discussion necessary on that? All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint Ben Peters as associate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. A motion we appoint Ben Peters as Second. associate member. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to appoint Ben Peters as associate member of the ZBA. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ben. Next up, ratification of emergency waiver action on May 3rd. Can you give us a little history for the people watching? Sure. So, um, a couple weeks ago, uh, the wastewater treatment plant operator called me up and said, hey, we're seeing some sandy sediment. Um, we think that there's some infiltration somewhere. Poked around, couldn't find it. Um, two weeks ago, the highway super said, hey, we got a sinkhole up on North Main. <laughs> and the um, wastewater treatment plant said, I bet that's what's causing our sediment. Uh, he said, we need to get that fixed because if we don't, uh, it's gonna cause problems at the wastewater treatment plant um, and procurement, it could take a month before we get somebody on site. So um, we called an emergency meeting uh two fridays ago um to authorize me to send a letter to the state requesting uh, a waiver of the procurement rules um and to authorize me to sign a contract we got the waiver last week um we had reached out to two companies we only got one response back the state was okay with that um, so on Friday, I signed the estimate um, with all states, and I think they're going to be on site tomorrow to start doing the work. Okay. So that was, um, we had to hold an emergency meeting just to get that approved, and, and that was pretty much it. Right, and, and you're looking for us to ratify that with the full board? Yeah, just, just to, you know, make doubly sure. Council said we did everything right, but they said... It wouldn't hurt. Exactly. Gotcha. Yep. What, right. was, what was the estimate on those repairs? It was a, uh, the estimate was forty-two thousand, um, which we fully expect to change once we 
once they get underground and actually know <laughs> how big the problem is or not. Mm-hmm. All right, and we had discussed um, treatment plant money, yep. ARPA, and then um, emergency money, yep. if necessary, or the what's the what's the fund, the backup fund, reserve reserve fund, that one, yeah, as being the third alternative. Okay, great. Um, all right, any discussion from the board? Again, you weren't there for that. Did you want to have any questions or anything? Well, like that? Did, well, did you TV, did you get to TV at all? Or no, you didn't. You didn't look at that. Did you? No, there was, and I don't know why, but there was a reason they suggested not putting a camera down there. Okay. All right. At this point, I would entertain a motion to ratify the emergency waiver action of May or sorry May third. Make a motion to ratify the emergency waiver action of May third. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to ratify the emergency waiver action on May 3rd. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. You. Okay. Next up is the opioid litigation expansion. Yep. So we got an email. Um, as you may know, Sunderland, along with almost every other town, um, is party to a class action lawsuit about opioids, um, basically that manufacturers um, hid the, the addictiveness and the harmful um, side effects of opioids. So um, now the prosecution is trying to expand it to include um, pharmacy benefit managers and in the investigation that they have played in contributing to the crisis. In order for us to take advantage, if um, they are found liable, we would need to say, yes, we're interested in expanding the litigation. So, so basically, is, they're going after more. So this is us signing on to the class for the right. class, basically. Okay. We, we've signed on to the class as, like... To approving like the expansion the of the yeah, class. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Got yep. Right. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, th- that sounds like no downside. And the upside is, if they are successful, more money for the town. So, great. I have no issues. Um, any? There's no downside that you can come up with, or that council can come up with. Um, no, council said this is a policy decision, so they didn't yeah. want to give a recommendation. Um, no, I just didn't know what they said. You know, this is your potential issue. Nope. Okay. I didn't see it. Of course, any. All right. That's my only question to do with that. Okay. Dan, anything or no? All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to authorize the expansion of the opioid litigation. Motion to expand the opioid litigation and sign on to it. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to sign on to the expanded opioid litigation. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Up next is a glorious piece of <laughs> of news, and that is that it is almost time for summer. Which means that it's time for us to discuss our select board summer schedule. Yes. So, um, I don't know. Scheduling, we can do via email. I wanted to put it on the agenda more as uh, a way to give people a heads up that it's coming. Um, But I'm not going to ask you all for your vacations in front front of the camera. Um, But I did want to mention it because one of you is not available (laughs) next week, so I didn't know if you wanted to at least, you know, set the next meeting. So next week is the 20th, then the following week is Memorial Day, so I didn't know if you wanted to talk about the rest of May and then come back with an actual summer after, a schedule after Memorial. The only little thing about next week is just... I was hoping to have a chance to do an executive session between now and that Thursday. Right. Um, but if we, it sounds like we don't have a full board anyways, it, it doesn't make sense to have an executive session with only two members of the board anyways because that's the whole point is me trying to get a chance to talk to both members. Okay, so let's, let, let, we won't worry about that. We'll push the executive so, session off to the following one because it's kind of rude anyways. Well, is doing those both because we would have to do the 27th that Memorial Day Monday we'd have to do that on Tuesday do we have enough business to is Tuesday not an option for next week yeah who who, who, is whoever is not available next Monday available other days next week I don't know (laughs) 
Good question. <laughs> not to not to put anyone on the <laughs> spot. Or right. you know, let, let's let's oh. let's talk via email. We'll give people yeah, a chance. Yeah, scheduling we can do. Um, but yes, for the public public's edification, um, we will be setting up a schedule for the summer. It will most likely look like every other week um, because of reduced business and to give everyone a chance to have vacations. And are we going to do that June, July, and August? Usually we do it Memorial to Labor. Yeah. 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 Yeah, which is June, July, August. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, So, okay. So, we'll we'll, we'll figure out the details of that via email um, once we've all had a chance to look at our schedules and whatnot. Um, And the next meeting will be either the 21st or the 28th, probably. And we will. By Thursday, we one way or the other, we will know. (laughs) All right. Beautiful. Um, Next up is surplus property policy. Um, Yeah. So, So, um, we have... (laughs) <laughs> I did that wrong. Um, we're going to have um, some surplus property to dispose of. I was looking over our policy and realized that our policy is kind of limiting. Um, the The state allows us to use our own policy for anything under ten thousand dollars, and the policy had said five thousand. Um, it was last updated. In 2011, I assume that that was the limitation in 2011. Um, so, the only recommendations that I am making to changing this policy is increasing the value to $10,000 and then changing Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Um, and for anybody who has questions about raising this limit, basically it says $10,000 or less. Um, value of property, the select board can decide how to get rid of it, give it to charity, do a online auction, whatever, give it to other departments. If it's over $10,000, we have to go through a procurement. So just in case people are thinking like, oh, that means $100,000 you can give away. No, that's, it's, it gives us more flexibility under 10,000 or currently under 5,000, um, but we would still have to follow state procurement rules for Well, and, and given how inflation is going, what was worth $5,000 but then is worth $10,000 now. So is it, and it's 10,000 per item of surplus property, not 10,000 per year or not 10,000 per uh, department or anything like that, it's, Yes. So, like, just say the highway department had five pieces of equipment that were deemed surplus. They could get rid of those five separate pieces at $10,000 each. Yep. Okay. I, I think it probably depends on, you know, if they were getting rid of a dump truck with a sander and a plow... They might, the state might say, yeah, get rid of it all together. Don't sell the dump truck and then the plow and then the sander unless you can get more money for it. But, you know, um, yeah. if they, there's a common nexus. But I think that. Right. Don't sell just the tires. I right. get that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but first, yeah, I, I the don't front know. third of a dump truck, middle third <laughs> of a dump truck. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't, you know, there wasn't some type of, you know. Yep. But did, but you wouldn't want to like split. Would you split things up just to make it easier, or would would, would you just if you I think don't? It, no. Okay. So. Um, but it. I think it would be rare that five pieces of equipment would right. break at the same exactly. time. Exactly. So, yeah. No. I just. You know. I think the last surplus. So one of the things that we're likely to have a request for is. 25 bicycles that the police have collected over the last decade. Probably makes sense to let those go as a lot. They're going to be under $10,000. Um, you know, um, but if they were doing a vehicle and 25 bicycles. Or if it was 250 bicycles and a lot of the bicycles was going to be $20,000, we could still argue pretty successfully that each individual chunk of them or whatever is... Ten or less, and also, and correct me if I'm wrong. This isn't a binding thing. If we if we get in a situation where like, eh, we're not really sure, we could still do a procurement. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so and we could and the board would have the ability to say, and we could even go to the, the the council and say, hey, we're a little unsure whether this is 
you know, above the board. And if council says, yeah, you know, maybe you do the procurement just because then there's no question, we'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and we're also, we're not changing how it works, we're just updating the limit. Yeah. It's always, or, it's already always worked like this. Yeah. Best. Seems reasonable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, Randy? All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adjust the surplus property policy to increase the limit by $10,000 and to change the wording from Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Yep, I motion we update the surplus property policy as stated by Jeff. Second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to update the surplus property policy. That's a big lot to say. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Aye, three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right, and last but not least is our North Main Street bus stop. Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, I'm going to get the dates wrong. Um, sometime in the last, I'd say, four weeks, um, the FRTA started installing more permanent um, bus stop signs on North Main Street. And I asked them to stop because I wasn't sure that we... I. I thought that the purpose of the temporary bus stop signs was to see if anybody used them, to see how many stops they were getting, like, if, and to see if it was a good location or if there were issues at that location. Um, so I reached out to the FRTA and they said, well, that's a temporary bus stop. We don't keep any data on that. I said, I don't understand what the point was, yeah, but okay. Um, so... What I would say is what I have heard is concerns with the location, um, both the proximity to the intersection and School Street, um, especially for the southbound bus, but I guess also could be for the northbound bus if it doesn't pull all the way in. Um, and I, some concerns from FRTA that were brought to them, they also said that they got, I think, three or four phone calls from Sanderson Place residents who were re very grateful for it. Um, and there was another call that we got when one of the signs went down um, asking about where, where the bus stop was because they were using it. So it seems kind of split on the community's reaction. Um, and currently FRTA is just waiting for us to let them know if they want did we already them. adjust the location of that once or no? I know we had a discussion about it. I don't know if... It was... The signs were placed in the wrong location and were corrected. Okay. But so that's what happened yeah. previously. All right. So my feeling is that we need to have a bus stop near San Jacinto Place one way or the other. I don't really feel comfortable having our seniors walking into the nearest bus stop without that there. I think that, that that's you know something that needs to be addressed one way or the other. Whether it's the perfect location for it or not, that's a whole other question. Um, I'm a little dis disheartened to hear that the FRTA wasn't take, keeping tabs on the usage because that would be very helpful for us. So we have to kind of rely entirely on anecdotal evidence. Um, can we reach out to the Sanderson Place administration and ask them to sort of take an informal poll of their people? And if they only have the three people who already said that they love using it, using it, that's one thing. But if Three quarters of the people there are like, "Oh yeah, I use it every day." That's a different piece of information for us. Um, sorry, Dan, go ahead. Yeah. No, no. I was just gonna say, is the question to have it or not have it, or is the question where do we put it? Um, I think there are both questions okay, that could so be both, answered. Both up there. Okay. Um, I think that if yeah, if it turns out one person or three people use it a month. Maybe that's the FRA, FRTA's decision, and we can say we want it, and they can say it doesn't make sense. Right, but the fact that they're putting up more signage, I would have to assume they aren't coming back to you to say we don't want it, right? They wouldn't be spending the money on signage if that wasn't something they're yeah. anticipating maintaining. Yeah. I mean, it's a good thing to have for the sanction. I think. Well, and I sure. also, as someone who's had a, a long career working in customer service, I know full well that people call in to complain at a much, much higher rate than they call in to say, I love this thing, please keep doing it. And so if we've gotten a handful of complaints and we've gotten a handful of people who've called in to say that they love it, most likely, and I have no evidence to back this, but most likely there are more people who are happy with it 
that aren't calling in, then there are people who are upset about it and aren't calling in. Just based on my experience in customer service. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. No, it doesn't oh, matter to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to be able to have more information about how many people are actually using it. Also, do we have any options beyond that? I mean, again, I, I don't love the idea of just getting rid of it and not replacing it. Is there an option to move it further up, you know, north a, a couple hundred feet? So, yeah, maybe the seniors have to walk down the sidewalk for another 150 feet, but they're it's further away from the intersection and is, you know, I don't know, more in line with what... Going on the were. other side of their driveway versus... Yeah. North of the driveway. Go, going a little bit away from the school street intersection and the 116 intersection because of that sounds like some of the complaints or some of the concerns is the proximity of those intersections. So I don't think there's, at least on the northbound side, part of that location was because there's the demos parking lot and yeah. the bus can pull off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm just, shouldn't be spitballing the meeting, but you know, we do have a pretty wide tree belt. Would there be a consideration of putting a bus pull off somewhere? Um, I, I think that that, that mass doc, or sorry, FRTA thought that that was the best location because it was the widest and right. had, had the pull yeah. off that was closest to the intersection. Um, I'm just trying to think of ways we might be able to accommodate a bus further north. Um, so when they pick up there and they're, you know, kind of in that demo space, are they kind of turning around? No, they're going, pulling in and out. They are, they are continuing. Okay. So, so the, uh, the options are at the, so this is maybe because, so the options are the driveway at 120 North Main, both sides. They're close to the driveway, just a little bit south of the driveway of 120 North Main. Yep. So it's either there or we pull it back to the parking areas in front of, in front of the demos and up to the library. No, that's where it is now, right? Um, pull up a map. And yeah, I, yeah. Thought I, saw, I thought I saw it in front of 120, but, and then, but I saw it in front of the tree the other day, too. So. <laughs> Look out the window and we'll see from here. <laughs> I just want to be sure I know what, 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 what we're considering. So right now there is a sign here, I believe, for um, 116 and like points to Deerfield that way and okay. Amherst that way. Yeah. This is where the stop is now. And then the other stop is sort of here, right around the driveway to Demos. Okay. Okay. And that's that's the proposed. This is a single proposal. Okay, that's the two yeah. locations. Okay. So they are still walking a slight distance. Yeah. And putting it closer to the driveway is out of the quest. Not not in the cars. FRTA um, would not go off of. North Main, that's what they said. No, they were, no not in the, not in 120, but not, not pulling over in front of 120 is not an option. That is not where they offered. Okay. okay. Um, we could ask. Yeah, that, that's sort of what we're trying to figure out. Is that, so, know, is... Or, 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 I mean, I, I think that the problem is that there's not... You know, there's not the width of the right. road. You get the... You get the five foot bike lane you can pull into instead of the driveway in front of the interest instead of the parking area in front of the demos. But the opposite side, they're pulling into the bike lane, right? Yep. I, mean, I guess another question is the people who aren't happy with it where they are, are they gonna be happier with it being moved a little bit down the road? 
or is their concern going to be the, their concern either way and we're going to be doing a bunch of work to make it a slightly less convenient location to, in order to not actually make anyone happier so you, know? you mentioned that the tree belt is wide enough does that you know for to actually make a pull over if you did that does that require any curbing removal any anything at all on so there's no curbing yeah. except for by the button ball yeah, yeah. Um, I don't I don't I don't know exactly I don't think there are any regulations on the tree belt but I know that it's a historic district and my understanding is the historical commission includes the tree belt as part of the historic nature so I don't know if they would have an objection mm -hmm. um, yeah, because you'd really be talking just kind of clearing out a little of an area and maybe throwing some trap rock down or something like that for a pull-off or... Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be talking paving it or anything like maybe that as a pull-off. some millings or something. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, you know, at most we would talk about maybe putting a shelter for people. Right, In the, yeah. yeah. If you did that, you'd want to move it. I don't know how close, I guess how far back would you go for that, but... So I guess our, our, our path forward is one, finding out anecdotal evidence from 120 North Main. So again, if it's only a handful of people who are using it, that changes our calculations. Two, finding out what met, what um, FRTA is willing to do. You know, or if we come up with a plan that involves moving it down the street, is that something that they're willing to buy into? Um, any other takeaways from that? And then see about a potential pull off. I guess. Yeah. If, we're and only, if we did a poll, we're talking about four foot strip of millings or something. Because you'd have five, you'd have four, you'd have nine feet. The lanes are 10 feet. Or, oh. you know, the lanes are 10 there, so you see space to pull in. A little, I, don't know, I don't know what you need, five lanes, you know, five feet, and be done. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, obviously we want it to be safe for yeah. the people getting on and off the bus. You want it safe for the bus driver. Yeah, I mean the other thing to to consider also is where the crossings are. Yeah, no, yeah, that's true. The, yeah, I, I go on about that on one sixteen. <laughs> you want to have like a in East Hampton, I had a place where they had the couple got let off the bus and then they crossed where there wasn't a good crossing and they got hit. I mean, it's a much busier. Right, road but we this. actually talked about this too when one twenty yeah. was being built that. It would probably at some point be in our best interest to have yeah. a crosswalk there. See, my thing would be to, I, I like that location for an RFB and right in front, it's close to the front of 120s. We could get it because yeah. I, I get nervous about the, the, the school street one just because of the traffic coming through. Right. Through but then you want to, you know, again, for people to access just, you know, exercise walking. Yep. Just to get across you know, safe. Yep. You, that would probably be a good place you know in that general area for yeah a crosswalk at some point the, then you know, the trick is you'd have to have the perpendiculars to the to the sidewalk yeah okay so i'll i'll come back with more information with we'll sanderson and frta okay one other question yeah. you could ask the 120 north main street if would they be more likely to use it if it was closer to the driveway? I mean, is it, is it, is it, can they take handicap? They, 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 can't, they can't take people in a wheelchair on that bus, can they? There are some kneeling buses, but I don't know if that one is. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, so we'll, we'll put that on the agenda for next time and discuss it further. All right, that was our last piece of new business. On to old business, select board updates. Um, only thing I have is uh, thank you to the Sunderland Fire Department and the Fire and Volunteer Fire Department Association for the lovely bonfire and festivities last weekend. Um, it was great, and thank you for putting it on. Crystal? I got nothing this week. Same thing with the fire department. We went down there for the bonfire for a little while, and it was really nice. Yeah, nothing this week. All right, that's it for select board updates. Jeff, town ministry updates.
Yeah, no, I don't, I don't have anything. Um, it, spring sports season is starting. The restrooms are available for use. Um, so this will be our first full season. <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, yeah, it, it, the weather's nice. It, it's nice. It's exciting. <laughs> it's a nice time of year. I got nothing sure else. Is. Beautiful. Oh, uh, Memorial Day Parade is next Friday. 24th, right? Yes. Okay. Just in case we don't have a meeting next week, we can end with the following week. And that's like every year, 6 o'clock here. Yep. Get here yep. early to line up and head down. Yep. And for people traveling, South Main Street will be closed yeah. for the parade. Be sitting on the bridge for a little while while we all cross. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Actually, yeah. though, just anyone driving through town, you can see your your CPA money. If you look up at the steeple, it's nice and bright white right now. It looks great. Wonderful. All right. I think that's everything we got. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion we adjourn. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Seven oh six p.m.